The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 390. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is a comedian, and I'm just really excited to have her on and share her story with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Tina Kim. Tina, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Yeah, hey, I'm happy to be here. Hey, everybody, I'm Tina. I've been a stand-up comic for over 15 years now. So I've done stand-up comedy, like, I started, like, 15 years ago, and I was really gung-ho about the whole experience and stuff. And now I've kind of slowed down, and I'm working on developing my app and website called I've Dated for Women to Tell Their Stories About Guys They've Dated so they can, um, you know, tip off the next girl. I'm working on that, and then I teach group fitness on the side to keep myself happy and uh, getting myself to exercise. (laughs) So that's pretty much what I'm doing these days. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, and Tina, what's your cultural background? Oh, I'm Korean, and I came to the United States when I was four years old. And so uh, obviously Korean's my first language, but, you know, I started kindergarten in America. So, you know, I'm pretty much American, but I still can understand Korean and speak broken Korean. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, and what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote would be, it's not that important. Whatever it is, it's not that important. It'll pass. Thanks for sharing that. You know, and it, it's a great reminder and quote too, just because like, especially as, as, you know, Asian women, we just take everything so seriously to the point like we realize like if, if we don't do it, it's like the end of the world, not realizing like it's not that bad. I really like that. And thanks for sharing that quote. And, you know, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? It took me a while, not that I'm so good now, but I definitely am a different person than I was even five years ago compared to 10 years ago. I described self-confidence. You really can't have any expectations of others because you get disappointed when you expect something. Do you see what I mean? I always have to ask myself, is it that important? You only suffer because you cared so much. (laughs) So not to be mean, but it's like, You got to not care so much. Is your happiness really based upon the fact that if you're going to get something or if somebody does something for you, is that really important? So I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but my confidence now, it comes from my inner strength because I have to ask myself, is that really important? You know, when you're younger, if you're dating, you want so much for the guy to like you back or call you or text you. And then you wait for that and you put all your energy into that. But Now it's like you have to tell yourself, why is it so important for this person to call me? Or why is it so important for me to get this job or this or that? It's actually, I'm rambling. I think the word is content. You have to be in content with where you're at. I think that's it. That's where the confidence comes from. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, that's a great, that's a great definition that you mentioned, especially like, yeah, you know, we're so we're in a world where we feel like we always have to do things for other people, not realizing like if we do this, does this make us happy or does this make someone else happy? Right. And and it and it also hinders our self-worth thinking like, you know, we need to have others permission or, you know, love in order for us to feel good, not realizing like we already have it. We can just feel good with whatever we do as long as it's, you know, we're doing something good. Thanks for sharing that. And, and Tina, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I guess it was always, it's like when I started stand up, I mean, I'm funny and I enjoy it. I love connecting with people and all that. But at the same time, a part of me when I started stand up, this was I was excited thinking that I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that when I do stand up. You know, I did get the opportunity to travel the world, all that. But at the same time, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can get on a TV show. And then if I get on a TV show, then I can get this and then I can get that. So I'm busy thinking about all these things I could get thinking that's going to bring me happiness. And it really was not. I love doing stand up because I like connecting with people on stage. 
And that right there should have been what I'm happy and content with. But when I was younger, I always wanted more. Do you see what I mean? I always wanted to get to the next step. And that is what brought me to Los Angeles because I was doing stand up out of New York. And then while I was in, while I, I do live in Los Angeles now, I did get on Last Comic Standing the first season. And that's why they had me on there. But then I realized the only reason they had me on there is because I was Asian. And that was the season Dat Fan is the person they wanted because he does all the ching chong jokes. And I don't do any Asian ching chong jokes it's not my style and um you know the more i do it you see how they make asians look bad anyways and i don't do ching chong jokes and i have to ask myself why am i doing stand-up is because i want to laugh and connect with people or am i doing it for myself because i want to make money and i want to get on tv it's all people's i guess their motivation and then i just didn't like how they make us look bad and stuff and I and I was like, I'll still do stand up, but I'm not going to, you know, put my morals behind me or not, you know, make Asians look bad and, you know, have to do all deal with all these horrible people in Hollywood. I don't know. I just said it's not who I am. And I kind of took a step back. That's how I kind of discovered my own confidence, because I'm going to be happy whether I get something or not. I always say it's self-reliance, too. I mean, I take care of myself. You know, people are so, you know, dependent on others and things like that. And, you know, as long as you can do it for yourself, I think that's the ultimate confidence because, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to listen to anyone. No one can really tell you what to do because you're taking care of yourself. You're taking care of yourself first. It's about you taking care of yourself first. That's where the confidence comes from. And even like you said earlier, and as Asians, you know, we always have to think about the other person and this, how we grew up, you know, but is take a step back and think about yourself. Thanks for sharing that. You know, it's great that you mentioned, you know, you did stand up comedy because you love, you know, do, you love doing it. Right. And and when you're in the entertainment business, sometimes they make you do things that you're not in alignment with. And like you mentioned, you just had to take a step back and realize, like, that's not me. That's why that's not why I did stand up comedy in the first place. And it's a it's good that you're able to stand up and do something that you believe in versus like someone telling you, no, you should do this because you'll get more laughs. You know, you're like, no, that's not me. You know, I wouldn't. That's not what I believe in. That's not how I want to portray myself as a comic. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. And if they don't like it, then it's like too bad, right? In the end, you sleep better at night. And you know, because of that realization, what's your life been? It's much more peaceful. And I'm not like when I was younger, it's always like, you know, what I want, what the next step. Now my life is different. I still do stand up when people want to hire me and I'll do corporate events, things like that. You know, and I'm totally content. Like I said, I'm working on trying to start this I've dated website and app. And I'm also teaching group fitness. And I still go out on like commercial auditions in Los Angeles. So it's basically I live like a freelance lifestyle. But I am my own boss of everything. And I like that. And I have freedom to do kind of what I want. And it's totally an untraditional life for me since I am an Asian female. As you know, they all want us to work a regular job, our parents, or her being get married, and then you'll be happy when you have your family. But, you know, I'm still single. I don't have kids. I think I'm already at an age where I'm getting too old to have kids. But I'm totally happy because there's no rules in life. But as Asians, I know that there's a lot of pressure, you know, for us to get married and have kids and do what our parents want. And that gives us extra stress, I think. But your confidence has to come from, you know, you can't follow the old rules. You have to, you know, be confident in yourself. And again, like I said, I live a free a life where it's freestyle, I guess I said that. But I'm okay with it. I don't have to have structure. And I don't have to know that I have a nine to five job because I don't like to have too much stuff. And again, was when I was younger, you want to have all the clothes. You want to have this. You think you're going to be happy when you have a house. But the older I get... The less stuff you have, the happier you'll be. Because the more stuff you have, then your energy's on all the stuff you have and maintaining what you have. And that's not really fun. You know what I mean? So I'm all about letting go. I have a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment, and now I Airbnb one of the rooms. And I meet lots of interesting people. And, you know, it's a very eclectic life I have. 
but I'm my own boss and I can create my own schedule. And, you know, I know Asian parents want structure, you know what I mean? And I still get sometimes complaints from my mom. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I, I know I, I totally understand what you're talking about. I mean, to this day, I think my grandma still thinks I'm an old maid. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And they're like, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> yes. But I mean, you know, we live in a world now where things are changing and we don't always have to do what our parents or grandparents tell us. Sometimes we have to learn to stand up for ourselves and live the life that we want and be truly happy with ourselves. So I'm glad you're out there doing that and you can be an example to so many other women out there. And um, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Like I said, whatever she's feeling now it's not going to be forever. It will pass. You know, when I go through my hardships, you get so depressed and you focus all your energy on that. But now that I'm getting older, I'm aware it's not like that always, you know, it will pass. And eventually we forget all the hard, you know, hardships of our life because other things happen. You can be sad for a little bit, but no, you're not going to be sad like that forever because that's it. No, it's not forever. Thanks for thanks for that great tip. It's so true, right? Like whatever happens is temporary and we can always get past through it. So thanks. Thanks again. And that was a great tip. And if our listeners wanted to um, get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Oh, yeah. My website is tinakim.com, which I've had. Wow. For a long time, because Tina is Tina Kim's a very common name. <laughs> and so I have my website and then that'll direct you to my Instagram. I mean, I'm not that much on social media anymore, but I still am on my Instagram, which I post maybe once every two weeks. Um, so basically, I'm on Instagram. Uh, that's basically my social media. It's TK Comic. But if you go to TinaKim.com, it'll direct that towards that. And then I do have like a group fitness page on Facebook, but a personal Facebook page. I don't have it anymore. I got rid of my Facebook like four years ago <laughs> because I was like, I don't know. I think Facebook's getting it takes too much of your time do you see what i mean people are all day on their facebook so i just got again remember i said i want to get rid of things you know so i got rid of my facebook i want to keep things as simple as possible awesome well thanks for sharing that and to our listeners if you want to connect with tina you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Tina's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just really want to thank Tina for taking the time to share her story and tips with us today on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Tina. Oh, thank you so much. And I think your show is fantastic. And, you know, I really went on a self-discovery in the last five years. And what keeps me going is what I what I pretty much learned studying Buddhism too, is like everything is temporary, you know, cause I've been many times where I was so depressed and I thought I couldn't get out of it, but eventually you do. You see what I mean? So knowing that it'll always pass will give people confidence. And it definitely gives me confidence because it's a part of life. And when struggles happen, instead of being negative, you have to go, I love it and I'll deal with it. <laughs> And I tell myself that all the time, too. Awesome. Well, thanks again. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.